Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water pattern. As you can see in the vise, this is a little variation on the damselfly. It's high up on the trout's menu at this time of year. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H970 barbless hook. It's at size 10. It's a long shank hook and as you've seen it's heavy wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas. It's at 8.0 and this is E14 which is a green colour. I'm just going to get some wax onto my thread and then I'm going to run a bed of thread approximately 3 quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to come back till I'm just over a quarter of an inch away from the eye of the hook. Remove your waist. Next, I'm going to create my eyes. I'm using some of this grease weevil, weasel, sorry. It's at 60 pounds, as you can see, and it's a yellow color. Now, if you follow my videos, you'll have seen me uh, form these kind of eyes before. Basically, I get a set of needle nose tweezers and I capture the tip of material just in to where I want the gap so basically if I want wide and I do on this occasion I'll have it a bit further down the needle nose then simply come in with your lighter and burn until it's nice and bulbous. Now, you've got to give this a little second. If you if you immediately touch it, you'll get burning fingers and you don't want that. And plus, you'll ruin your eyes. So, uh, double whammy. Just give it a second, let it dry. And once you think you're there and you'll get, to, you'll get a feeling for when it's right, catch it in with two turns horizontally, then bring your eyes round and just make sure before you start lashing lots of thread over these that they're nice and even and then you can figure away till your heart's content like so then come back down the hook shank now what I like to do is a belts and braces sort of thing is add a spot of super glue just to the eyes while I'm working down the other side of the house and that just helps to bed them eyes into place so once you've done that bring your thread all the way down the shank and on this occasion I want to stop just at the hook point there and what I want to do is take it further about an eighth of an inch and I'm going to start building my little bump at the back of the fly. Now again, if you follow my videos, you'll know that I do this on all my long-tailed lure type flies. Or nymphs on this occasion, this is a damsel nymph. But what it does is it just stops the marabou tail wrapping around the bend of the hook. So I've brought my thread back up to just before the eyes. And the marabou I'm going to be using today for the tail is from Comp Candy. As you can see, this is the olive-esque, nice shade of olive. And what I want to be doing is taking from the tip of my thumb to my knuckle. And that's the sort of the guide I use, if you like. And I've just taken that off the stock and then pinch in the waist. Just get it so that you're happy and then remove the bit you don't want. Then that can be dressed up to the hook shank and caught in. Make sure it comes all the way back. And I'm just lifting it up so I can see where my bump is. Perfect. Now, it's a little long for what I need. So I'm just going to come in with my thumb and forefinger of my right hand and shorten that up a little bit. Now I like to have a bit of blue in my damsels, but on this pattern, 
we're going to use some orange, which is also very effective. So I'm using the Globrite number 6 here, and I've already taken a little strand off. Now I want it slightly longer than my marabou tail. So you've got to take enough as, as that it will come around like this. So just catch that in on your side now. And the best way is to lick your thumb and forefinger, bring it all back and then you just want it an eighth of an inch longer, no more. There we go. Now, next thing to do is add a shell back. And what I'm using for this is some nymph skin. Uh, I'm using the green one. Now, the nymph skin has a shiny side and a matte side. And we want the shiny side down on this occasion. So I'm going to bring my thread back up the shank about an eighth of an inch and just capture that in at the little V I've made. Make sure it comes all the way to the butt of the flyer. You end up with a little gap and uh, it's we've got to sort that out later on. It can be sorted out, but it's better you get it right first time. So next I'm going to tie in my uh, wire rib. I'm using some of the Venyards number 27. It's a silver rib. I thought I had a piece off, but I haven't. So I'll just take a little bit from the spool. And I'm going to wrap that in as well. Now, there's always a danger when you're doing these kind of flies that you start to get a lot of bulk at the back here. But because we're going to be using a dub body, we can, we can sort that out. So don't be overly worried about any sort of bulk you've got at the back. It can be saved with a dub body. So the dubbing we're going to be using is from Trout Stalker and this is the Caddis Green. I've already got some out of the packet here and as with all the Trout Stalking, sorry, the Trout Stalker dubbing, it's really easy to use. So I want to, I want to dub it on quite hard initially because remember I want to change that tape around from the back to the front of the fly. So I've got quite a bit on my thread. It might not be enough, but we'll see. So nice touch and turns, nice and tight. And then as we work up to the front of the fly, you can see I've actually changed the direction of the taper now, which is exactly what I wanted. Next then, we simply bring our nymph skin over the top and lock that into place. Might take more than a couple of turns, you don't want it springing back on you. I've not pulled it excessively um, over the top there and I've just crisscrossed it over the eyes. Belts and braces. And then I can just get a couple of wraps to lock that into place. Lift it up and remove your excess. Now just put that to the side because we're going to use that again in a minute. Next, we're going to bring our silver rib round. Over the top and I want nice open turns. Just over an eighth of an inch wide, uh, sorry, apart. And bring that all the way up to the front of the fly where you can secure it with your thread, like so. Once you've got that locked in, a couple of turns in front, then you can remove your wire rib. Just going to move that piece that was getting on my nerves there. Next then, we've got to catch in some more nymph skin and you can see I've already cut a little V here and I'm kind of working cack handed so I want 
to just get that V in. And I've got the, again, the dull side is facing up. So when I bend over, it's going to have the shiny side as the thorax cover. Now once you've got it on, it, it's fine. It's just getting that little bit. Bring your thread all the way to the eye of the hook now. To there. And we're going to be using some more trout stalker stubbing. And you want to get a nice bulky dubbing rope. Is that right? Dubbing rope? Yeah, dubbing rope onto your thread. So as you can see, I've got that wrapped on. So what I'm going to do is, as close to the eyes I can get it really, I'm going to start wrapping that round. Now when I get to the eyes, I'm going to crisscross your way, then my way, and then I'm going to come in behind for a couple of turns. And that's worked out perfect actually. It seldom does, usually I've got to add a bit or take a bit off, but uh, Providence is with me. Next then, simply bring our thorax cover over the top and get, give it a little stretch. You don't have to stretch it to bits, but a nice little stretch so you get a bit of tension. Two or three wraps. Then to finish it off, I'm going to add a little bit of super glue to my thread. And then I can come in with my whip finish tool. Well, I could if I could use a whip finish tool. It's still giving me trouble after all this time. And finish the fly off. Then you can remove your waist, stretch it out, not super tight, but tight enough so that when you trim up, you're left with that. Now if I just tilt the, the fly your way, you can see I've got a nice shiny thorax cover and the back's all shiny. Now while I've got the vise like this, I'm just going to come in with my dubbing brush and tease out some of them thorax to imitate the legs. And that, my friends, is a very, very effective damsel pattern. I hope you enjoyed that. A couple of techniques there for you. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe. It means a lot to me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.